hospital was originally built in 1938. It was used as an ambulance station at the time, and then it turned into the fire service. So right from the late 30s, it, it, was, it was all fire service. The fire brigade realised that, you know, in the event of the flood, they were isolated, they were sort of cut off from most of the city. So what they did was they built stations east and west, and that's how we ended up getting the building in the end, because then it became free. And of course at the time, there was this big question of, well, does Carlisle actually need another place for the arts? And quite quickly, I mean, the answer was, well, yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, a, a city in an area of this size, it need, needed more places, it needed more variety. Carlisle, for too long, had been a bypass. People would buy, you know, they'll run away at the lakes or they'll run away at Glasgow and stuff. Well, no, Carlisle's a destination in itself. And, and with the arts, especially stuff like gigs and theatre, a lot of the time people will travel, they'll go to Manchester, Newcastle, Edinburgh. And it's like, well, we need to be offering that here. The big thing was, well, Fact is, there are need will people want to come because you know we were, we were sort of like looking at audiences across the board, whether it be comedy, whether it be music, whether it be theatre, or whatever else might come in. So what we did basically before we opened, uh, opened the doors for nothing, just when it was a shell, we'd done nothing with it, and got the public in to see how people would use the space, and we had it was over three thousand people in that first six months. Coming in because everyone was very interested. Well, what's all this about? What was interesting was everybody kind of said, Well, don't do anything really with it, keep it industrial, keep it nice and free and open. And that's exactly what we did, you know. So it's a space to be whatever it wanted to be, we didn't want to pin it down to anything. So we made sure even like the staging was flexible, you know, the shapes of the room were flexible, you know, the main hall put theatre curtain in so we could make it different sizes. Uh, and it, 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 it worked really well. And we, we were going about, what, six months, and then we got flooded out again. It was like, no, 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 no. Go home with nothing on your mind. What it happened, uh, the second flood was, was really devastating because we were just getting momentum. You know, we felt like, oh, we're really starting to get somewhere. You know, we're starting to get some set out shows, which we had lined up. Uh, people were really getting interested in it. We had eight, over eight foot of water, which was just bonkers. We came down, um, massive leather suite we had, just for the suite, had been moved from one end of the hall right to the other and left on the bar. The whole stage was buckled and just taken out. But the day before a Christmas tree had been put up by the bar and it was still in place. No idea. How does that happen? How does that happen? That happened was, people seemed to miss the place, and I think it, it proved that, that there was a need. So that was really exciting, because it was quite a gamble, because the city council invested in this. And this was at a time when local government just wasn't spending on the arts at all. You know, so Carla really broke the trend. And the idea originally came from Joe Hendry, who was the leader of the council at the time, and he saw the benefits of culture and the economic value. So he stuck his neck out and said, right, I want, uh, I want an arts centre. We've got a new stage system, which was much more flexible and much easier to work with. Uh, and I think most importantly, certainly for the gigs, we went from like a, a 3K rig to an 8K rig, so the PA, oh, we all doubled in power and potential and what a difference that made. I mean, we quite quickly moved on from being just an answer because I think what happens then is people s seem to think they know what it should and shouldn't be. And we just want it to be a venue and then it can be whatever it wants. Uh, and that's what, that's what we did. Yeah. 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 One of the most important things we do, we, we do support a lot of local um, like, like bands and local theatre. There's been a lot come through, it's really well supported, which is good, because the idea always was to offer a, a platform for local and for national and for international. And where we are now is quite exciting because now we have some pretty big agents now almost discovering it, going, oh, Carlisle's on the way to everywhere, isn't it? We've always done we have been. But it's absolutely fantastic. We've got, oh, this fits in really well with our tour here. So I really feel like we are starting to get on the map. And it's lovely, you know, that the old fire station is part of putting Carlisle on the map. Because it's always been a bit of a sleeping giant, I think, Carlisle. You know, I'm like, oh, it never happens here, or it doesn't, or it shouldn't. And of course it should. You know, it's absolutely riddled with talent and exciting things. It was 
was and it went to feel clicky or this isn't for me or that's for them. It's like, no, no, it's for it's for everybody.